Hey guys, so today we're gonna to be making a 3D point cloud animation, just using some simple effects in After Effects. Hopefully you guys enjoy the tutorial and I'll see you there. Just before I get into the tutorial, I'd just like to let you guys know that I do have a set of online assets that you guys can download. It's mainly Photoshop mockups and it's just meant to help elevate your work and just take it to that next level of professionalism. You can go check out my Gumroad in the description. Everything is free and publicly available for you guys to use and take advantage of. So yeah, let's get into the tutorial. So we're in our After Effects project. We're gonna make a new composition. I'm gonna make it 1920 by 1920, 30 frames per second. I'm gonna make it about 14 seconds long. New composition, uh, we're gonna call this our source layer because this is what our footage is gonna be in. So I'm going to drop in a video of a bee that I shot a while ago. I'm just gonna move this down. So it's roughly kind of centered. And I'm gonna stretch this by about 400 just to slow it down a bit and just get a nice section where you can really see the bee. So this is kind of cool, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, just absolutely mind blowing. Anyway, if you add a layer, new solid, and I'm just gonna add a turbulent noise on top of that, drop that in, reduce the complexity, increase the contrast. Then we're gonna go into transform, we're gonna scale that up. And then at evolution, we're gonna alt click this little time thing and then do time times 50 or something like that. See how that looks. So it's just moving very slowly on top of that footage. So we're gonna add a wave displacement or a wave warp in our distort. That's gonna create this kind of look. We're just gonna increase that, rotate it by 45 degrees and we're gonna reduce the wave speed to something like 0.1 so it's very slow and this wave width we're just gonna increase to about there. I'm gonna scale this up a little bit and I'm just going to tint this as well like so and then if we right click up here and go to modes we can click this mode here and just go to something like multiply and it should it should just sit on top. Uh, we could also do something like exclusion which is quite interesting. I quite like that actually. So yeah, this is our kind of source footage. So we've got some nice areas of, of light and some nice areas of dark. Uh, we can always increase this by just increasing the brightness and the contrast. And we can also add an adjustment layer here and just add that brightness and contrast there. And we can do that as you can see. So it's good to make sure you don't have areas of super white and super dark. So zero and two, five, five values, because then it's gonna clip against that when, when the ball comes in. This is gonna be our main comp. We're gonna drop in our source footage. Then we're gonna add a CC ball action effect like so and we're going to drop that in and this is the kind of effect we have so i'm just going to decrease the ball size and yeah that's good for now so we can go in layer and new layer camera two camera node we can hit p and just pull these values just to kind of change the position to something we like like that maybe now the interesting thing about this effect is this displace function and this twist function so essentially how it works is it multiplies the displacement based off of the light or the brightness value. So essentially the lighter the value, the more that object will be displaced or that point. As you can see, the lighter values are being increased or decreased. It's essentially a scalar or multiply node if you can think about it in Blender. So let's start at maybe 30 for now. And we're just going to increase this as time goes along and just increase it to something crazy like one for four. So we also have this twist function, which is pretty cool. So this can just twist on these different axes, but we can also use our brightness as well. So we can just twist this based off of our uh, lightness value in the same way. So I'm just going to start at something like zero and then go all the way across. And I'm just going to increase this ever so slightly just so we get quite a nice effect like that. So we're already getting something kind of cool. So with our camera now, we can change our camera position and we can just zoom in. You know, it creates a really nice 3D effect. And yeah, 
I think it looks pretty cool. So if we now go back, we can see this effect happening, which is pretty cool. Uh, you don't need to do this with footage. You could just do this with turbulent noise. It creates an interesting effect as well. It's a bit more kind of mathematical or, you know, perfect it looks. Uh, another thing you can do is if you go file project settings and in your color, Make sure it's set to 16 bit. That's gonna increase the amount of color values. So the steps between those points will look a bit smoother and it'll just give you a bit more accuracy like so. So you can see areas that are completely white clip against this value. That's the maximum it's allowed to actually be displaced by. So it's clamped at that top value and I'm sure it's doing the same for the darkness values. So we can also increase the amount of, or decrease the amount of grid spacing, for example, and increase the ball size which will just create this kind of interesting more i guess high fidelity look they will obviously put a bit more pressure on your machine but if it can handle it it can look really cool and yeah you know there's endless possibilities with this kind of effect so yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed the tutorial and i'll see you in the next one